In this video, you're going to learn how to graph polynomials using the zeros, the end behavior, the multiplicity of the zeros, and we're going to get a good sketch of our graph. We're going to go through two examples. So let's do the first one together, and the second one you can practice on your own to kind of test yourself. So this first one, we have f of x equals 2 times x plus 4 times x minus 1 squared times x minus 5 cubed. Now this is already in factored form. If yours is not in factored form, you can factor it first. And then what you want to do is to find the zeros, you're going to set all these factors equal to zero. So the factor is like a group. So you can see here, if I go off to the side and I say, oh, x plus 4 is equal to zero, subtract 4 from both sides, x equals negative 4. So that means it's going to cross the x-axis here right at negative 4. Now notice that this only occurs one time. You can think of this as a 1 here. That's like multiplicity 1. Over here, when we set x minus 1 equal to 0, you can see we get x equals 1, but that's with a multiplicity of 2. And we're going to talk about what the graph looks like when it approaches this uh, x-intercept of 1. And then lastly, if we set x minus 5 equal to 0 and add 5 to both sides, you can see that we're getting x is equal to 5. So that's going to be right, right here on the x-axis. Okay, now before we get into the multiplicities, let's talk about the end behavior. Now the end behavior tells us when you go to the right end of the graph, is it going up towards positive infinity or down towards negative infinity? And when we go to the left end of the graph, is it going up or is it going down? Now, the way you can determine that is by this leading coefficient. So the leading coefficient tells us about the right end behavior. So because it's positive, that means this graph is gonna go up towards positive infinity. So that means it's going to be going like something like this. Now, if you're not sure about this, what you could do is you could put in a number, let's say, for example, like 10 for x. And when you multiply this out, you're going to see it's going to be a really large positive number. But the shortcut is you look at the leading coefficient. If it's positive, it's going up to the right. Okay, now, how do we know if it's going up to the left or down to the left? Well, we're going to look at the degree of this polynomial. Now, you don't have to multiply this out. That would take quite a bit of time. But what you can see is that 1 plus 2 is 3 plus 3 is 6. So what I'm doing is I'm adding these exponents. If I was to multiply this out, this would be an x to the sixth power. So it would be a six degree polynomial. When the degree is even, that means it's going to be going the same direction to the left as it is going to the right. If this was going down, then this one would be going down. So even degree means the same end behavior right and left. If it's an odd degree, it means they're going in opposite directions. And you can check out a video I did talking about end behavior if you want to learn more about that. But now what we want to look at is what happens when you approach this point negative 4. Well, negative 4, this only has a multiplicity of 1. When it's an odd multiplicity, it's going to go through that x-intercept. And in this case, you can almost think of it as like a line, like x to the first is like, like a line, right? So it goes through like this. Now, over here at 1, this has a multiplicity of 2. See how it's squared? So you can think of the shape of an x squared, like a parabola. So when it's an even degree, what's going to happen is it's going to bounce off of that point. It's going to basically look like a parabola, like x squared. But if this degree is even, like 2, 4, 6, it's going to bounce. It's going to basically look like that U-shape at that x-intercept. And then over here at 5, we have an odd multiplicity, which tells us that it's going to go uh, through. So when it's odd, it goes through. Now, if you want to get a little bit fancy here, you can think about what does x cubed look like? Well, x cubed, the graph looks like this, where it's almost going to bend and kind of bounce, but then it goes through. So it kind of bends the other direction like this. So this is just a sketch. When you get to calculus, you're going to learn about how to find out exactly how far this graph, maybe it goes way down here, or maybe it just goes down a little bit. Uh, that's kind of called the uh, extreme points or the extrema or where the graph bends. But for right now, we're just trying to get a rough sketch. Now, you can also find this y-intercept point right here where it crosses the y-axis by putting 0 in for x, and you can solve for the y-intercept. Okay, but this gives us a pretty good sketch. Let's take a look at another example and we'll, we'll do some more. Okay, see if you can get a good sketch of this polynomial, f of x equals negative 3 times the quantity x plus 3 squared times the quantity x minus 3 to the third power. So the first thing I would do is I would set these factors, these groups, equal to 0 to find our x-intercepts. 
And I think you can probably see without doing uh, too much work here, x plus 3 equals 0. If we subtract 3, x equals negative 3, right? So that's going to be one of our x-intercepts. And if we set x minus 3 equal to 0, add 3 to both sides, x is equal to positive 3. So those are our two x-intercepts. Now let's look at the end behavior. So you can see that if we were to multiply this out, which I don't recommend because it takes quite a bit of time, right? you would find out that you would have a leading coefficient of negative 3. And, and it would be negative 3x to the fifth power. See how 2 plus 3, when you multiply, you add the exponents? So basically, we're looking at a polynomial uh, that's a fifth degree, but it has that leading coefficient that's negative. Now remember, the leading coefficient tells us about the right end behavior as we go to the right end of the graph. If it's negative, that tells us we're going to be going down towards negative infinity. If it's positive, that tells us we're going to be going up towards positive infinity. But the degree, if it's an odd degree, that tells us we're going to go the opposite direction to the left. So for example, if this was going up, then we'd be going down to the left. If it's an even degree, they go the same direction, either both up or both down. And the way to remember that is, uh, take a look at the uh, graph x squared. When you graph y equals x squared, see how they have the same end behavior? They're both going up. Or if you graph y equals negative x squared, they're both going down. See, like that? Same end behavior. Whereas when you graph x cubed, which is an odd degree, see how they're going opposite directions? Or if you do negative x cubed, see it would look like that? So you can use that as a guide. Now let's look at the multiplicities. So at negative 3, this 0 here, when we set this factor to 0, we get negative 3 twice. So at negative 3, this is a double 0 or a multiplicity of 2. And what happens is when it's an even multiplicity is it's going to bounce. It's going to look like a parabola, like x squared. Now, depending on the direction, if it's coming from below, it's going to bounce this way. If it's coming from above, it's going to bounce like that. Okay. Now, what happens over here at positive 3? When we set this to 0, we got positive 3. But it was a multiplicity of 3. It occurred 3 times. Now, when it's an odd multiplicity, that tells us it's going to go through. But if you want to get a little bit uh, nicer graph, what you can do is think about what x cubed looks like, which looks something like this. It's, it's kind of like this graph right here. So it goes almost like it's going to turn around and then it bends the other direction. Now, you might be saying, Mario, how did you know to bend right here? Like, why did you maybe not just go up to here and then go down, right? And again, we, you'll learn about that in calculus. This is just a rough sketch. You can get some additional points, like for example, if I put 0 in for x, I could solve for this y-intercept. You could also plug in 1 and 2 and negative 1 and negative 2. Try to get a little bit uh, better graph, but this is a pretty good sketch. Now, if you want to see more examples about graphing polynomials, follow me over to that video I did right there, and we'll get some more practice. I'll see you over in that video.